the slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever Hey team, I hope you're all doing well. I know a lot of you out there are trying to break the sub 10, 3200 meter. And you know, as you know, that's eight consecutive laps at 75 seconds per quarter. And so you have to improve your body's lactate tolerance. And it's not a matter of th that you're not gonna be able to break this barrier. Sometimes it can take athletes several years to get to this point. Sometimes it can take athletes that are much more genetically gifted. Um, a much shorter period of time but the proper strategy you really have to think about when you're trying to aim for a sub 10 minute 3200 meter time is pace pacing yourself making sure that you're not trying to run too aggressive in the first 1600 meters of the race so my recommendation is to be much more conservative going through that first 1600 meters you know you don't want to go out 451 or 452 through the first 1600 meters and then run like a 510 or 515 in the second 1600 meters. This is a very tough time. I mean, they're, once you're breaking the sub 10 minute 3200 meter time, you're really starting to get to more of an elite type time as a high school athlete. You know, there are athletes out there that do break nine minutes for 3200 meters. I mean, my, my personal best in high school was nine minutes and 46 seconds. And some of the mistakes I made as a high schooler. I mean, I had run two two minutes flat for 800 meters and 425 for 1600 meters, which I was much stronger at the shorter distances. But what I was what I was doing as an athlete that had much better raw speed is I was going out much more aggressive and too fast in the first 1600 meters of the race. And for me personally, I mean, I ran 946 as a uh, junior in high school, and then I ran 946 again as a senior. I did. One of the biggest mistakes I was making was, again, I was going a little too aggressive in the first 1600, and I was not being able to sustain that pace in the second half of the race. Um, there are athletes out there that definitely set new personal best running pers running uh, a positive split. They're much more aggressive in the first half and then slow down in the second half. And, but to break 10 minutes, you really have to be focusing on training sufficiently throughout your week, once or even twice a week, running down closer down toward around 430 mile pace. And you can do this for like 200 meter reps, you can do it for 300 meter reps, 400 meter reps. You're gonna run into some challenges, obviously, if you're trying to do the run at 430 mile pace for repeat 800s. Uh, or repeat 1200s, but you still can spend some time each week running at considerably faster paces than sub 10 minute 3200 meter goal time. And that's what we want to do, but you got to also pay attention to your recovery as well. Your volume needs to be, you know, as a high school athlete, in, in most cases, anybody that's really going after a sub 10 minute 3200 meter more than likely is in high school. Uh, maybe you're in college right now and you're trying to run eight laps under, under 75 second quarter pace. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be going out there trying to run at, you know, 80 to 100 miles a week like a marathon runner, okay? You don't necessarily have to run high volume to do this, but you do still need to have a consistent um, aerobic base built. A longer buildup is obviously critical. Um, you know, as a high school athlete, you're going to run into some other challenges too uh, in order to break a sub-10 minute 3200 meter. You don't necessarily have the luxury of picking exactly the races you want to run. In a lot of cases, I, I was an example of it too, where I was an athlete that was tr trying to win points for the team, you know, and sometimes you do, do got to sacrifice your, your goals uh, for the overall benefit of the team as well, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, but sometimes we're running four by eights, 800s, 1600s, and the 3200 in one race and doing that a couple times a week. Okay, so you have to make sure that you just plan out your year and do the very best you can not to peak at the wrong time. Okay, um, again, a better strategy to run a sub 10 minute 3200, I think, is, is going out maybe around uh, 506 to 507 through the first 1600 and then coming back with, say, like a, a 449 to 453 for the second 1600. Okay, you're a little bit 
a little bit more conservative in the first half, and then you really focus on going all out in the second 1600 meters of that race. Obviously, that to do this and to become more strong, to be a, become a sub 10 minute 3200 meter athlete, work to get your tempo run out to around uh, four miles. If you can double the distance of your goal race here, think about how much easier a sub 10 minute 3200 meter time is going to be. Um, and that takes time. You're going to have to first focus on learning how, what it feels like to, to handle tempo pace for one to two miles and to be able to, to work your way to a point where you can run that entire distance on the roads or on the track without having to stop. It's normal when you're first starting off and you're, you're not very anaerobically fit um, to not be able to handle that. And, and, you're, and just know that your body will adapt. It does take about 28 days for the body to adapt any stress load you're placing on it. So don't expect overnight results, uh, especially going after a time this fast and this competitive. It's going to take time. But work your way up to a point where you can extend that duration of your tempo run out to around four miles. You're doubling the distance. You're running your tempo run maybe around 535 to 545 per mile. And again, that's not running, you're not running at goal two mile race pace, but you're still running at a high enough anaerobic, closer to your anaerobic threshold. You're running at a very high amount of lactic acid and teaching the body to clear it faster than it's building up, improving your body's lactate tolerance. And of course, you can't do that by running slow and easy. 95% of your weekly volume, okay? If you're extremely genetically talented and, and you know, there is there is some cases where athletes break the 10 minute mile, two mile barrier, uh, running very small amounts of speed, but focusing more on volume and just building that strength by just building an enormous amount of aerobic mileage. But again, it's what you're putting into your weekly training is what counts. Put in one, uh, one speed workout per week Focusing on, like I said, gradually working your way to a point where you can run some, some 200s, some 300s, maybe at 420 to 430 mile pace, or some 300s or even 600 reps. Um, even doing some like thousands at like around 430 mile pace. Again, doing like four to, to six one thousands on the track. Again, that's going to strengthen your stamina. It's going to build your stamina. It's going to build your endurance. Um, it's going to be definitely help you mentally as, as, as psychologically to be able to handle this goal of breaking a sub 10 minute 3200 meter time. And again, I think that it's that second 1600 that counts. Um, there are some athletes, you know, I was I was stronger in the 800 and 1600 in high school. There are other athletes that are stronger in the 3200 and the 5000 in high school. Um, so you just have to work on work on your weaknesses, work on and work on your strengths as well. In the 3200, you still need you still need speed. Um, when I ran 946, I went out in 444, but I came back in a 502. And looking back, I don't know if I would have maybe I would have ran in the the high 930s, maybe mid 930s, if I would have went out a little bit more conservative in the first 1600, uh, maybe like a 504, 505 through the first 1600, and then really focused on that second 1600. So I just don't want you to make the same mistake that I was making in high school and going out way too aggressive in the early stages of that race and cost yourself a sub 10 minute 3200 meter time. A lot of you are probably very close to, to breaking this barrier already. So it's just a matter of making some minor tweaks, continuing to work on your speed um, and, and not running any further than you need to in the race. Do the very best you can to stay in lane one and um, Stay as relaxed as you can. Make sure you're hydrating well pr prior to the start of your race. The two miles over is so fast, so it's not like a marathon or a half marathon or a 10 mile time, you know, on, on the roads or even like a 10K. So you're not going to necessarily need hydration in a two mile race. Um, unless it's extremely hot prior to the start, you know, and you're dealing with humidity and, and um, hot conditions, make sure you're drinking prior to the start of your race and definitely after you finish. But I think that this this is a you know once you've broken five minutes for 1600 meters you you definitely have to start thinking about okay how can I, I've done this once how can I put this back to back how can I get myself to stay consistent throughout the race from start to finish and to run a 959 for 3200 meters it's definitely doable other athletes around the world other high school athletes collegiate athletes you know post collegiate athletes go out there and, and train to do this. And, and if they can do it, there's no reason why you can't do it. 
So if you have any other questions or concerns about breaking the sub 10 minute 3200 meter time or anything else that's on your mind in regards to training, regardless of the distance, definitely comment below. If you're wanting to take your training and race to the next level, the resources below these videos as well as on rundreamachieve.com and I'll talk to you all in the next video.